Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. GA ASI Certifiable Ground Control Station makes its first flight. Terra John acquires Sky to accelerate global expansion. And Census Technologies provides beyond visual line of sight waiver applications with great success rate. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. A certifiable ground control station from GAASI was used for the first time in October to fly a remotely piloted aircraft. The flight originated from Yuma, Arizona and flew GAASI's MQ-9B Sky Guardian RPA. Aircraft flight critical functions were tested successfully, including hold modes, landing gear, flap operation, and hand flying of the aircraft. We continue on a path towards integrating RPA into non-segregated national and international airspace, where they can fly safely alongside commercial aircraft. To achieve that goal, we are producing STANAG compliant ground control stations, in addition to STANAG compliant Sky Guardian aircraft, noted Lyndon Blue, CEO of GAASI. The CGCS includes the same FMS, cockpit displays, and navigation guidance as those found on modern civil aircraft. The CGCS also enables weapons and payload control for Sky Guardian. The ground station's hardware and software architecture provides separation of flight and mission critical functions. This allows mission software to be modified without affecting flight critical software. The mission human machine interface is designed to provide situational awareness on a single tactical situation display. Avionics associated with a flight management system, including traffic collision avoidance, are certified under FAA TSO. The upcoming test schedule for the CGCS includes full launch and recovery, HMI enhancements, mission critical functions, and SATCOM data link testing. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. A name well known to those of us in the unmanned community is in the news. The FAA has announced Earl Lawrence's promotion to the agency's executive director for aircraft certification. Lawrence was previously executive director for the FAA's Unmanned Aircraft Systems Integration Office. He succeeds Dorinda Baker, who retired November 30th after a distinguished aviation safety career. Instant Eye Robotics has secured a contract with the Defense Logistics Agency in support of PMA-263. The Navy and Marine Corps Small Tactical Unmanned Aircraft Systems Program Office to fill 32 Instant Eye Mark III Generation 5D1 small UAS systems. This procurement is being executed in support of a United States Marine Corps urgent needs request for field user evaluation. The new Instant Eye Mark III Generation 5 D1 platform expands mission scope and provides additional reconnaissance, surveillance, and target acquisition capability to the individual Marine or sailor. Innovation Center XL Cargo Drones was launched during Amsterdam Drone Week. The University of Twente, NLR Netherlands Aerospace Center, and the Amsterdam University of Applied Science have combined their research strengths in the field of drones to accelerate the introduction of unmanned cargo aircraft. The three institutes set up a research agenda on all aspects of UCA operation, from societal issues, logistical opportunities, to technical challenges. ALTI UAS has launched a search and rescue variant of the ALTI Transition VTOL UAV. This comes after some of the worst fires in South African history recently swept through the area. 
The LT Transition SAR Orange is a specific version of the LT Transition designed for search and rescue missions. It's compact, rapid, smart, advanced, and includes a vibration damping mount for the combustion engine, allowing up to 12 hours of endurance per flight with a range of nearly 500 nautical miles. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Japan-based Hera Drone has acquired a majority stake in European drone service provider Sky. Sky will become the European headquarters of Terra Drone. With this acquisition, Terra Drone has become one of the largest drone service companies with more than 250 employees and presence in all continents. Terra Drone Limited serves its clients with surveys and inspections through the use of cutting-edge drone technologies. Sky is an aerial survey and inspection company with a focus on drones in the oil and gas market and with its headquarters in the Netherlands and offices in the United Kingdom and Belgium. Toru Tokushige, CEO of Terra Drone, explains the reason for the acquisition. We have had discussions with many drone operators in Europe, but were especially impressed with the track record and professionalism of Sky. Sky has an excellent track record and a vast professional experience in the on- and offshore oil and gas market, in both inspection and 3D surveys using drones. We consider Sky to be the best partner to bring our technologies to the European and African market. Daytona Beach, Florida-based commercial drone manufacturer Census Technologies has introduced the Beyond Visual Line of Sight FAA Waiver Application Aid claiming a great success rate. With a Beyond Visual Line of Sight waiver from the FAA, drone operators can operate census aircraft out to a 2.7 mile range from the ground control station. The extra distance from the GCS improves accessible coverage area from below 5 square miles up to over 22 square miles. Currently, Census Technologies offers visual line of sight and beyond visual line of sight drones with plans to release a hybrid VTOL version of their Sendero V2 in late 2018. Census Technologies offers two options to the beyond visual line of sight waiver process. Buy a visual line of sight drone now and no cost for the beyond visual line of sight waiver until the FAA approves a Beyond Visual Line of Sight waiver for you. Or pay half of the estimated waiver application process cost up front with no commitment to buy Beyond Visual Line of Sight hardware whatsoever. Once the Beyond Visual Line of Sight waiver is approved, the discussions begin on drone purchase. The company says that most waiver applications take 90 days for approval. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.